you saw the same fault there in the previous video bits one and two so that's all right it just gives me some confidence that it is not the pins on these there are actual faults on them so looking at the page with the sim modules on here uh, you can see here uh, x32 sim this is one of the sims um, and looking at the connections on it here um, on the sim side d0 is pin 2 d1 is pin 4 d2 is pin 6 so one of those memory modules had faults on was it bits uh, 1 and 2 0 was all right 3 was all right 1 and 2 had a, an issue that's what was consistent that was the one that was uh, coming up uh, pretty much instantly at the same uh, point every time wasn't the intermittent one so i'm going to have a look on that sim um, and measure connectivity between pin 4 and pin 6 to the chips that are on it what we can do is you can pull that chip off take one of the ones off the other sim and on the other sim it was a similar thing where it was the one of the lower um, 16 bits I'm just going to take one from the upper on that one uh, you know they're so hard I don't know if I say pin 64 for example that's one of the upper chips I'm going to take the chip off that let's put it onto the other one and see if we can get that sim working if that works then I know that I need to source two of those chips for the remaining sim and at some point perhaps we can uh, fix that as well so we're looking at pins four and six uh, so you can see uh, pin one is down here um, pin 72 is over there yeah so if we test continuity yeah so it's not like it goes odd and even it is literally one to 72 so measuring from pin four yeah, pin four goes to this chip here. Uh, five, six, see where that goes. Hopefully the same chip. And it is, so it's this chip here. So that's nice and easy, it's the uh, end chip. So on this one here, what we'll do is we'll take this end chip off here and fit it there. So I'll get the hot air onto that now and we'll get that IC off. So hopefully this shouldn't take too long It'll be useful to do this anyway because you never know we might find some corrosion around there um, the main thing is because we've got connectivity from the pin as you just saw we know that it's not the uh, PCB edge although it's possible the little wire on the uh, pin there is not making a connection through to the other side and it's actually the other side that's making a connection on the uh, motherboard but my understanding is the way the sim socket works it tries to make a connection on both sides of the sim um, you know when you fit it in there so it's probably this memory module to be fair it's coming off that I think there we go so I've got some flux on there I'll uh, clean up the pants in a minute so I'm going to remove one from the other side on this one I'm going with the edge because it'll be easier to swap it out later now remember this one's got a faulty memory module as well but if I remember rightly again it was the some of the lower bits it was like a bit 6 and 8 or 7 and 8 or something so um, yeah the likelihood of this chip being the faulty one well it's pretty slim I think it's right on the other side this is going to be on the upper word there of the 32 bits so uh, yeah we'll give, give this one a go It. So I've got some flux on there, just cleaning up the pants here now with a bit of desolder braid. You can see it just wicks up the uh, old solder. They're not 16 pin these, they're 20 pin look. There's five on each uh, side there. I think while we're here, although I've cleaned that cap up, we'll just uh, give it a little reflow just uh, for good measure. You have to be careful not to get too much solder in there because 
they are uh, super low profile mounted those caps for a reason to go under the chip so I'll just uh, get the new chip into position this is the one we took from the other board this is from a location that I think should be good on that other board so clean the sides of those pins there with the fiberglass brush because we're going to be soldering that in a second I'd like the uh, pins to flow as well as possible it's just near to the point where it joins the uh, PCB that's important and the other thing I'll do just careful here is use a bit of desolder braid and uh, just gently go over the tops of each of the pins here just to make it a bit easier and flatter and cleaner if you're putting new chips on you don't need to do this obviously just gently you can see, I don't know, you can just about see there's a little notch here that indicates pin 1, each of them has got a notch there so the notch will be nearest to down here you can see uh, pin 1 there so the tricky bit with these is the pads are so small you've got to make sure it's totally aligned correctly here and it can be quite fiddly because there's hardly any pad exposed down the sides so I'll do the same thing that I always do when mounting uh, any kind of IC really which is to tack one corner and then the other so if we just kind of hold it get some solder and try and flow that single pin there it's going to look a mess we'll need to get some extra flux on this in a minute to get it to uh, flow but let's just see if that's holding it is flip it around and do the opposite end here got the diagonal opposite end here again like I say it's going to look a mess until I've got some flux on that and float all the other pins but that's now in place it's going to be a real mess doing this bit for sure you can see I'm getting way too much in there but we're going to clean all this off in a minute anyway that should do and uh, get some solder on the iron and I'm going to dab into each of these just leave it long enough so that I can see the solder flowing onto the PCB from the pin This is where a super fine bit can uh, do wonders. See, I've joined two pins up there, look. And I'm getting connections on the uh, chip opposite, so you've got to be really careful when you do this. Got another bridge there, look. And just carefully uh, to push around that whole area. Hopefully, we've got good connections. We'll test it in a second and see if that fixes it. So, we can just uh, wipe away the uh, IPA there now. Also, bear in mind on some sims, and this might be an example, you might have parity. If you've got parity and you're not using the parity within your system, you can actually use the parity chips to repair the uh, the main ones. So, I mean, this could be a good example. I haven't inspected the uh, way this is configured to see if these are parity. But because it's got a really weird number of chips on it, I am guessing this one does have parity, actually. So, we'll also just clean up the uh, edge here, just in case we got some flux on that edge. And then we'll go and try it. So super annoying, not detecting that memory. I've reflowed it two or three times. I mean, the solder points don't look uh, great on there because of the last reflow I did, but there are no shorts. And I can, as far as I can see, it's all joined up. So I'm gonna have to remove it again, uh, just to have an inspection. I've changed the tip on the iron as well. That's the uh, old one there. I've put one with a really fine uh, tip on it, but I need to remove this again. Maybe this IC is faulty. Maybe I just happened to pick one of the faulty ones off the other board.
so take two I've got another chip just to rule out the chip and I've put the solder on the pads in advance I'm going to use hot air to fit this actually rather than uh, try and uh, solder it the other way just because the pins are so uh, wrapped under you know because the pads are so little exposed there's hardly anything exposed um, I think hot air is probably going to be the easiest way to fit these so I think if we get this in uh, approximately the right position here and he's moving over that way a little bit what I'm hoping here is the surface tension of the solder when it melts might just pull it sort of into position a bit a bit like you get with BGA mounted components anyway that's had uh, far longer than it probably needs so you can see there just tapping it to see it no, that's not quite down yet. That is not quite on. Yeah, I would say with hot air, that's the easiest way to fit it. And uh, it looks nice and tidy. And uh, I think it's okay. Because it would have failed by now already. So I think we fixed that sim. So just cleaning up the IC uh, that didn't work here, that I think does work. It was just not detecting the sim at all. There were no shorts, it looked like it was soldered on, but uh, I'll be honest, it's really difficult to solder these on because there's nothing exposed on the uh, traces and the pads on either side of the IC. You've got to use hot air, I think, if you want to do a good job. But just for now, I'm going to mark this one with a question mark on it. Um, we will revisit the other sim if I can find uh, replacement uh, RAM ICs for these. So I'll clean up uh, the other one. It's uh, obviously uh, got uh, two ICs missing now. It's got the one we originally used as a donor, which would not work at all. Now it might be that I uh, hit it first time and removed the faulty one from this. I honestly cannot remember. That said, it was being detected previously uh, when it was on this board but when it was on the other board it was uh, just saying uh, zero you know fast ramp when that sim was on its own in the board there it wasn't detecting any ram at all so i could have damaged it with hot air uh, i could have damaged it with uh, static electricity because there was a point i think when i touched that uh, module when it didn't have an esd wrist strap on so yeah that's not out of the realms of possibility i happen to think that the actual reason it wasn't working is because it wasn't soldered on there very well i think you've got to use hot air to mount these properly on a sim it might be different if you've got more clearance down the sides but there's next to no clearance on these to be able to easily solder it side on so I'll leave it going another hour or two, but as you can see, it's on pass number 37 and it's going strong. No issues whatsoever. So yeah, it's definitely 100% fixed. So I've got my ESD wrist strap on here. I always wear uh, an ESD wrist strap when handling uh, devices like this. And if we uh, just try and get it to focus, can you see? Yeah, reflowing with the hot air there, you know, just soldering the pads and then sticking the IC on using hot air to uh, fit it on. You'd never know. I'd replace that. That looks fantastic. So I'll leave this testing for a number of hours, but uh, anyway, that is working 100% as far as I can see. Hopefully you found that interesting. Catch it in the next video.